Hey everyone, Steve here from Big Head Tech, and here is the question today. Do I suck at my job? Should I quit YouTube? That's actually have been um, said a couple times that I don't know what I'm doing. And while I'm not offended, that drove me to make this video. Maybe I did something wrong. It would not be the first time. So let's take a look. Can I make this graphics card acceptable enough where I tell you to buy it? I'm keeping it. I can. I, it works fine for me, but it's hard for me to recommend. So we're doing some completely different, different test bench. We're running on my system because my system actually, believe it or not, runs better than my test system. <laughs> my, my personal system set up a certain way. Uh, let's look at what I'm running. A 3900X with Precision Boost Overdrive, a 360 millimeter AIO, uh, has the PC Cooler Corona ARGB fans. They hit about 1800 RPM. They have really good static pressure. Three on there, two out. We have a Lee and Lee PC 11 Dynamics. We have uh, Crucial Ballistic, 32 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, 3200 megahertz. Two ASRock Tai Chi, um, obviously the card and the board. X570, EVGA power supply, crucial SSD, okay, done with that. Let's talk about the assumptions you can make. Precision boost overdrive is on, XMP is on. Temperatures were right around 22 to 23 degrees over ambient. We ran one benchmark because it was stressing it better than any other benchmark. That's Final Fantasy 14, the, I think it's called Shadowbringers. And I did have the GPU mounted vertically Disclosure, the way the PC-11 Dynamics is, there's about five to six inches between that and the glass. I did test horizontal as well. You'll be surprised, horizontal did worse. But I did test that as well. These are the tests that I did. 100% fan speed, which is about 52 dBA. 100% fan speed, a horizontal mount. 100% fan speed with the side and the top panel removed. Stock. Um, or well, these these all bi these biases are all stock. 60%, which was about 38 dBA. 80%, which is about 44 dBA. The original test, which ranged between 30 and 55. My undervolted test, and then I ran a silent bias at stock and auto undervolted. I ran a lot of tests. So let's take a look at the core temperature first. And we actually have this one's a little surprising, with the side panel removed, and top panel removed, and fans at 100%, which is well in the 50 dBA range, plus 43 degrees over ambient. Not really a shocker there. However, my undervolting job on the OC BIOS was 47 degrees over ambient, so pretty good. You don't want to actually have to ha have your case, you know, running open, you know, dust. Then we actually have just the fans running 100%, then the Undervolt with the silent BIOS followed by the silent BIOS. So the difference between flipping a switch and Mine was about five degrees, which isn't huge all things considered and Then we have the fans at 80% the fans at 100% with a vertical or a horizontal mount which again the vertical mount's actually better in this case, as I proved earlier. Uh, and then 60% and then the original um, setup. So, it's not real big surprising. Temperatures at the core weren't that bad. Anyway, memory is next. So, here, uh, again, same thing with the fans 100%. Basically on an open test bench, essentially. Uh, 46 degrees over ambient. There's a pretty big jump to... 100% on the fans and that moves to 51 degrees. Then my undervolting job is another degrees of 52. Fans 100% horizontal did 56. 80% vertical did 58 over ambient. A silent BIOS with an undervolt did 61 over ambient. Silent BIOS stock at 62. And then the fans at 60% slash fans at 30 to 55%, 64 over ambient. So those were in the 86 to 87 degrees, which is honestly well within spec. So from the core standpoint and the memory standpoint, the card actually runs fine. It runs a little warm, but it's not out of what I would consider danger zone. The hot spot is the danger zone. That is the concern to me. So it turns out that my work with the undervolting was the best option. 
Now in this case, I just undervolt. I didn't overclock anything. I underclocked to 2,000 megahertz, uh, which was a target. So it was like 1959 or something like that. Memory stayed the same, and we're at 61 degrees over ambient. And in this particular case, that put about 83. <clears throat> The silent BIOS with the auto undervolt was 64 over ambient, which to be honest, if you're just clicking the auto undervolt, it's not really a big deal. But do note the difference between stock and this particular setup is about one and a half percent performance. Not a huge amount, but just keep that in mind. That could be one or two FPS in some games. Then running everything at 100% with the side panel removed was 65 over ambient. The stock uh, or the silent BIOS at stock was 66 over ambient. So that put it in the real high 80s, which honestly is fine. I start to get worried when we're hitting the mid upper 90s. That's where I'm not comfortable. Uh, and that immediately becomes apparent in the next one, which is running the fans at 100% vertical 80 percent vertical 60 percent vertical we're at 73 76 and 77 over ambient now we're approaching the upper 90s then we were horizontal was the second worst at 78 degrees over ambient that was at 100 percent versus the fans at 55 percent running 80 degrees over ambient now these tests are a little bit different than the benchmark because this is a different case different setup they're a little better so let's talk i did all these tests to make sure that I didn't make a mistake, <clears throat> but I took it one further. Guy reached out via the hardware swap Reddit and says, hey, I have the car too. Here's my test system. Let me do some benching. And he said, these test results are a little better than yours. Okay. Well, then we dissected it. He's running 1080p, not 1440. And he's running the silent bias. I said, well, my silent bias is actually better than yours. My test system in this situation actually performed anywhere from three to five degrees better I don't know what his ambient is, so that's going to be a little tricky, but he showed me a picture of a 100 deg 108 degrees hotspot. I think I capped out at like 103 in the test system, so that was a 5 degree difference. So a lot of it has to do with his ambient. So luckily for you guys, when I made my first video about this particular card, I was a little bit of a Debbie Downer because out of the box, I wasn't getting what I really liked to recommend it. Now, has that changed? Maybe if you turn the BIOS to silent in a case that has some airflow, I mean not obstructed front, it's probably fine. It's at the really high end of my comfort level, right around 90 degrees on the hot spots, probably what you're going to run into, maybe low 90s. That's fine, but that's about as far as I'm comfortable. The memory getting in the mid to low 80s is no problem. Those are rated technically up into the 90s and 100s, but there's no official spec for that. The core temp, when I, when I go back here, none of the core temps were of concern. The hottest core temp was essentially 57 degrees over ambient. That's still under 80 degrees. That's right at 80 degrees. So that's fine. The question is, what's the problem? Why do we have cards like this card, the thick, the for me the mech oc why are the hotspots so high well where that sensor is picking it up is most likely in the die and if that is in a different spot by a couple nanometers or i don't want to say millimeters it's probably a big move but if it's a little bit further left right front center whatever have you the temperature might drop five ten degrees the difference between the hottest part of the die and the edge temp in my test is upwards of like it could be as low as like 15 but upwards of 25 degrees so that's kind of where i think the problem is i think some of these cards and, and this is a really good example so if we take the silent bios for example um, we were a core temperature at stock. We we're 52 degrees over ambient. So that's about 75. The memory temp here, taking a really quick look, was about 85. And then the hotspot temp was mm, in the 90s, close to it, right around 90. That sounds fine. But then when you take a look at the OC stock BIOS, memory temps were in the mid to upper 80s, hotspot was over 100, and the core temp was, again, right around 80. So there's a big difference going from the core, the memory, the VRM, which I didn't show because that 
those were like much lower than the rest than the hotspot. So I really have to think that it has to be a sensor placement where a little bit this way, a little bit that way can have a huge difference in that reading. The rest of the attempts honestly look fine to me. So I, I still don't want to recommend this car because it's a very expensive car and there's like the pulse is going to run cooler and the gigabyte car is running well and the red devil is running well. It's just something that just not worth the headache. If you're really concerned about temps, it's just not worth the headache for a lot of you. I'm keeping it. But if you want to buy, I'll put a bunch of, I'll just put a search, RX 5700 and 5700 XT. There's a bunch of them in the link in the description. Buy one. Like the video if you liked it, dislike, dislike, leave a comment, get subscribed. But as always, this is Steve from Big Head Tech, and I'll see you later on down the road.